Good morning, Johnny Rub Gamers. This is video number five on playing the Johnny Rub Three Rules. Today, I'm going to show you the nice charts that they have. Just go over them briefly, and I'll get into more detail about each part of the chart on other videos. The one thing that was nice when John made Johnny Reb 3 is we went from four charts in Johnny Reb 2 to two charts on Johnny Reb 3. So conveniently, you have just simply a front and a back side uh, all in one hand for the use for that's all you'll need for the gaming. So I'll briefly go over the chart. Up and upper left, you have gaming scales if you're interested in that. Movement scales, depending on the size of miniatures you're doing. And then we get into the playing aspects. In this here, you'll see 1 through 9, the turn sequence. And that is what each troop does before you go on to the next stage. So very quickly, turn sequence is the mark orders. Routes, rallies, and replacements, reveal orders, resolve first fires, move disengaging units, resolve charges, perform normal movement, resolve moving fires, resolve officer casualties. It's important to know that that turn sequence, you complete the whole turn sequence before you go on to the next one. On this part here on the chart, it's very convenient. For your markers, the order definitions, it gives the order definition in a really quick format of what FR, first fire means, D, disengage, H, hold, C, charge, the arrow movement, and FM, formation change or change formation. It does not have the CH on the chart, which I already covered with the chits, the markers, that means condition hold. Up here, it gives a definition of infantry regiments, cavalry regiments, artillery batter, battery, and officers. And as I just covered in the last video, in video number four, the infantry formations. It's a nice handy guide to have if you forget. And the artillery formations, um, something I did forget to do in the last video. But very simply, it's either limbered or unlimbered. At the bottom of the chart, you have movement rates on this portion here. It's very simple. Whatever formation you're in and what type of terrain you're in um, is how far you move. The numbers given is the maximum numbers and in inches that you move. So, for instance, in single line, you can go up to six inches in open, up to four inches in broken, two inches in woods and one inch in rough. On the right side of this chart, you have important things to have that are called comeback effects. Depending on what formation you're in here, you have different comeback effects, whether you're in melee, a firer, a target, or in a charge, the impact morale. The top portion covers infantry. The bottom portion here covers mounted cavalry. There's a section for dismounted cavalry and then for limbered and unlimbered artillery. So the chart really is just masterful actually and very easy to get used to once you start playing. On the back side here, you have the combat results table at the top and it's very simple. On the left side, you count up the number of figures firing in your regiment. Depending on the formation, they may be halved or quartered. On the right side, you have how many sections firing. That's for your artillery. And then at the top, you have your die roll. And then you simply cross-index those two after you do die roll modifiers down here, which I'll explain in a minute to get the number of figures that are casualties or misses or morale checks. Here you have a description on the chart of combat procedure. It explains 
very clearly how to do it. Count the number of figures artillery sections firing, multiply for fire formation effects, and then you roll one, two, three, or four dice depending on the circumstances. It explains very well how to use this chart. On the right side there is the ranges for different firearms and artillery. Rifle muskets, the normal rifle used in the Civil War is two for close, four for normal, and 12 for long. And as you'll learn, when you're close, you get to add a dice. When you're normal, you get three dice, unless you moved or some other issues like disorder. And long is two dice. So that varies how many dice you use in firing based on your ranges. The same with artillery, canister, normal, and long. Very handy chart. Now part of the combat results table that's important is after you um, count the figures you have firing and cross index on your roll, you do have what's called DRM, die roll modifiers. So you'd go through the charts here. This is, for instance, fire die roll modifiers, the ones who are firing. You have target die roll modifiers, which is the target. And then you have other things like behind wood fence and flanks and whether the target's green or elite. And you also have a column for a variance in artillery fire on flanks, on rear and partial flanks. So this middle chart here, you combine with what you're doing at the combat results table. It seems like a lot at first, but after you play a few times, you'll be able to rattle those off in your head without even looking at the charts, knowing the plus and minuses for die roll modifiers. Down here, on this part of the chart, you have the morale. Each regiment has a different morale, depending on what type of troops they are. And the morale can increase or decrease depending on, on what happens to them. For instance, when you lose a stand, your morale goes up three more. So if you were a three, it goes to a six. This chart here, here tells you when to check morale. For instance, when a unit takes its first law, when it's hit by artillery, a sharpshooter, a plus one uh, modified um, modifier, uh, when a unit loses a stand or a section, and if a unit is within six inches of routed, destroyed unit or officer killed. This shows you the effects of morale loss. You have three levels of morale. You have good, you have shaken, and you route. Basically, if you fail your morale roll using two dice, you will go down one level in the morale. On the right-hand side of the chart, you see it explains very clearly how to check morale. Your basic morale points right here, and then the adding or subtracting of morale point modifiers, also known as MPMs. So BMP means basic morale point, and MPM means modify, I'm sorry, morale point modifiers. And you add and subtract that. There's also a difference down here in the modified points, whether it's by fire or by a charge. And finally, on the bottom of the chart here, you have the infantry charge procedure. Go step by step as you do this. Complete each step first before you go on to the next one. And then I'll explain how the results are done in a charge sequence. So just very quickly, this is the nice two-sided chart they have. They have it. You can get it in blue or gray. Um, Scott Mingus also has a chart that he made that I believe is available online. His is made uh, a little more colorful. And also his chart is in the sequence of the turn sequence, um, going step by step. It's a nice chart to have if you want to use another chart beside this one. So that about sums it up really quickly, you know, briefly, about the Johnny Reb quick reference chart.
beautiful chart. Till next time, see ya.